first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule, and that's all the rules there are. Hi, I'm Monk, and this is the Monk Way. Let's watch and analyze Warren Buffett's first TV interview, where he talks about his investing principles. Beginners and pros can learn a lot from one of the best investors. We'll analyze every point he's making, and see how we can apply it to our own investing style. Subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a like for more investing videos. I make these every day. And make sure to join Monk's Market Mastery in the description below. A complete, fully animated course on the stock market, including a section for the market crash. It's 50% off for the first 20 people who uses the link below. I also included two of the best investing apps in Rebo and M1 Finance. Both are free to trade. Get two stocks worth up to $1,000 on Rebo and buy big stocks like Amazon for pennies on M1 Finance. Links in the description below. Let's start with the video. We'll stop the video and analyze it as it goes along. This is an interview that aired in 1985. So Warren will be 55 here. The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth, and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. His first point is to never lose money, being rules one and two. Now, what does he mean by this exactly? As an investor or trader, you know that losing money is almost inevitable. There's no way to pick the perfect stock every time. Sooner or later, we will be down 20 to 50% on a company. What Warren means is this. Don't panic sell when your stock is in the red. You don't actually lose money until you sell a stock. So if you pick the right company with the right research, over the long term, it should go up or go back up if it dropped. This is what he meant by buying things below what they're worth. If you buy a good company on a good sale, logically, the company will go back up if nothing out of the ordinary happens. This is why the more research you do, the better. Warren is known for buying and keeping a company forever. Let's continue. Warren, what do you consider the most important quality for an investment manager? It's a temperamental quality, not an intellectual quality. You, you don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but, uh, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. Because this is not a business where you take polls. It's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you. And you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. Warren thinks you don't need a high IQ in order to be a good investor. This is very true because anyone can read some simple stock numbers. Anyone can research Apple and see they're doing well and might do well in the future. All it takes is time and a bit of effort. If you take a week to research your next investments, I bet you will pick something good. But what you do need is a stable personality or emotions. This means not being an emotional trader. It's very easy to get caught up in the news when a stock drops. When everyone is doing one thing, the human mind will tell you to do the same. But if you can stay calm and look at the facts of the business, look at all the research you've done, you could go against the crowd and buy when everyone else is selling. It doesn't take high intelligence, but it does take emotional stability, which is not always easy to have. It really helps to think of the money you're investing as extra money you don't need. The less emotions tied to that money and the more facts, the better. Continuing. Warren, what do you do that's different than 90% of the money managers who are in the market? Certainly most of the professional investors focus on what the stock is likely to do in the next year or two. And they have all kinds of, all kinds of uh, uh, arcane uh, 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 methods of, of, of approaching that. But uh, uh, they do not really think of themselves as owning a piece of a business. The, the real test of whether you're investing from a value standpoint or not is whether uh, you care whether the stock market is open tomorrow. Uh, if you're making a good investment in a security, it shouldn't bother you if they close down the stock market for five years. It, all the ticker tells me is the price. Yeah. And I can look at the price occasionally to see whether the price is outlandishly cheap or outlandishly high. But, but prices don't tell me anything about a business. Business, uh, business figures themselves tell me something about a business, but the price of a stock doesn't tell me anything about a business. I would rather value a stock or a business first and not even know the price so that I'm not influenced by the price in establishing my valuation and then look at the price later to see whether it's way out of line with what my value is. What makes Warren Buffett different from other traders? Warren doesn't look at the price of a stock. Price movement does not make a difference to him because he's not buying stocks. Well, he is literally, but he's investing in the actual business itself. If the market closes for five years, why would it matter? He knows the business he bought will continue to grow and stay healthy. The average person might look at the price movement daily and be subjected to mistakes from the previous two points. It's very easy to trade emotionally and sell on a loss. If you think of the stock market as a place to gamble on companies, instead, think of it like you bought the whole company. If you've done your research, price movements week to week is just noise. Warren Buffett would research companies without looking at the price. 
only when a business looks good will he look at the price. And if the market cap of the business is under what he considers a good value, he would buy that company. Let's go on. So Buffett chose to stay in this world, Omaha, Nebraska, where corn grows just minutes from downtown. Now, Omaha is a nice town, but nobody claims it's a world financial center. Here, the only thundering herd is actually on four feet. Don't you find Omaha a little bit off the beaten track for the investment world? Well, believe it or not, uh, we get mail here, and uh, we get periodicals, and we get all the facts needed to make decisions. And unlike Wall Street, you'll notice we don't have 50 people coming up and whispering in our ear that we should be doing this or that this afternoon. You appreciate the lack of stimulation I like, here? I, I like the lack of stimulation. We get facts, not stimulation here. <laughs> How can you stay away from Wall Street? Well, if I were on Wall Street, I'd probably be a, a lot poorer. At, uh, uh, you get overstimulated in Wall Street, and uh, uh, you hear lots of things, and, and you, you, may, you may shorten your focus, and a short focus uh, is not conducive to, uh, to long profits. And uh, here I can just focus on what businesses are worth. And I don't need to be uh, in Washington to figure out what the Washington Post uh, newspaper is worth, and I don't need to be in New York to figure out what uh, some other company is worth. It's it's, it's simply it's an intellectual process, well, and, uh, and the less the less static there is in that intellectual process, really, the better off you are. Looks like Warren doesn't like to be on Wall Street because of overstimulation, which can cause emotional trading. This is a very simple point, kind of like not reading the news every day about your company or checking the price movement too much. The calmer you are, the better the investor. Continuing. What is the intellectual process? The intellectual process is is defining your level, defining your area of competence in valuing businesses, and then within that area of competence, finding whatever sells at the, at, at the cheapest price in relation to value. And there are all kinds of things I'm not competent to value, but what? there are a few that I am competent to value. Have you ever bought a technology company? No, I really haven't. In 30 years of investing, not one? I haven't understood any of them. <laughs> so you haven't ever owned, for example, IBM? Which Never owned IBM. Great, Marvelous great company. company. I mean, it's a sensational company, but I haven't owned IBM. And so here is this uh, technological revolution going on, and you're not going to be it's a participant. gone right past me. <laughs> is that all right with you? It's okay with me. <laughs> Arthur, I, don't have to, I don't have to make money in every game. I mean, I don't know what cocoa beans are going to do. I don't, you know, I, there are all kinds of things I don't know about. And that may be too bad, but... Uh, you know, why should I know all about them? I haven't worked that hard on them. The intellectual process is choosing your sector. We all understand certain things better than other people. Warren doesn't understand technology as much, being an older man, but as young men, we can understand stocks like Apple, Amazon, Netflix a lot better. Sticking to your area of expertise is a good idea. Imagine investing in Roman's fashion when you're a man who knows nothing about it. So Warren Buffett hasn't bought one technology company at the time of the interview. He has recently bought into Apple, so he likely did a lot of research on that. He was perfectly content not being a part of this sector. I do understand his meaning, but I think even he changed his mind about this. It doesn't hurt to stay informed about the latest trends and get a good grasp of it over time. So there might be more opportunity, but you should definitely understand what you're investing into. We continue. In the securities business, you literally every day have thousands of the major American corporations offered to you uh, at a price and a price that changes daily. And you don't have to make any decisions. You have to make, uh, the, nothing is forced upon you. So you, there are no called strikes in the business. The pitcher just stands there and throws balls at you. And uh, if you're playing real baseball and it's between the knees and the shoulders, you either swing or you got a strike call on you. If you get too many call on you, you're out. In the securities business, you sit there and they throw uh, U.S. Steel at 25 and they throw General Motors at 68 and you don't have to swing at any of them. They may be wonderful pitches to swing at, but if you don't know enough, you don't have to swing. And you can sit there and watch thousands of pitches, and finally you get one right there where you want it, something that you understand, and then you swing. And uh, So you might not swing for six months. You might not swing for two years. Isn't that boring? It would, it would bore most people, and, and certainly boredom is a, is, a, is a problem with most professional money managers. If they, if they, if they try to sit out an inning or two, not only do they get somewhat antsy, but their clients are start, yell they start yelling, swing you bum, you know, from the, from the stands, and that's very tough for people to do. He's comparing investing to baseball, but investing is a lot more relaxed. Opportunity might come every year, or even every other year. You never have to pick a company to buy. Of course, he's also a believer in not timing the markets. What he means is that picking one perfect company doesn't have to happen instantly. Let's go on. Warren, your, your approach seems so simple. Why doesn't everybody do it? Well, I think partly because it is so simple. That, uh, the academics, for example, focus on, on uh, um, 
all kinds of variables. Partly uh, because by academics, you mean uh, professors of right, finance, the, yeah, the, the and data business, is there. and business school. Sure, the, and the data is there. So they focus on whether if you buy stocks on Tuesday and sell them on Friday, you're better off, or if you buy them in election years. Uh, and, and sell them in other years, you're better off, or if you buy small companies, there are all these variables because the data are there. And, and they've learned how to manipulate data. And as a friend of mine says to, to a man with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And once you have these skills, you just are, are, are dying to, uh, uh, to utilize them in some way, but they aren't important. Uh, if I were being asked to participate in a business opportunity, would it make any difference to me whether I bought it on a Tuesday or a Saturday or an election year or something? It's not what a businessman thinks about in buying businesses. So why think about it when buying stocks? Because stocks are just pieces of businesses. So why doesn't everyone invest like Warren Buffett? His principles are simple, but controlling your emotions is not. Most traders are hoping for fast money when they trade. This simple long-term strategy is not fun. It's pretty boring, but it's safer and almost guarantees you a return over time. People who read charts all day love to look for patterns, ignoring fundamental questions like is this a good business? Warren really believes that investing is just buying a business. It's not a gamble. There doesn't have to be much speculation and patterns are not needed. If you follow all these simple principles, you can be the next Warren Buffett. And if you want an easy to follow course, check out Monk's Market Mastery below for a complete animated guide on investing, including over 24 videos just like this one. It's 50% off for the first 20 buyers. Subscribe, hit the bell, and leave a like for more investing videos. I make these every day. Keep watching to invest like Warren Buffett the Monk way.